Hi everyone, Adam here. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to try to see if we can do this quickly. Uh, two, we're going to try to create a couple of gauges for this player's or this athlete's performance relative to um, some cohort that we care about. Now, we want this to be interactive, or I do, so that you can put whatever metric in here that you want. So, what we're going to do first is in this uh, row 12 here, I'm just going to highlight all of these cells and merge them together and create a drop down list of our metrics. So, we'll go to data, data validation, and let's go to our admin area where we have all of our metrics, all of our testing metrics. And we'll select a list from a range, and we will select, e, even though we don't need name in there, and it's fine, E2 to E, and click OK, and reject an input otherwise so that we don't get errors. Essentially, we just want a list of all of our testing metrics, and nobody else sees the list except for whoever is using it. If you care about that, then you might want to just do like a, you might not want, not want to include name, date, position, you might just want to have a list of metrics that that you define somewhere else in another list that you create this list from. So what I'm saying essentially is you might want to take out broad jump, 10 meter sprint, 10 meter sprint, body weight, body fat, all the key metrics, put them in another list, and then refer to that list when you're doing this drop down menu. And you can do that across the board. I just do it this way because I don't I don't care about what's in what's in the list really. I usually know what I'm looking for, and I generally don't change things. Um, but you might want to, and also this has to be flexible so that uh, multiple people can use it and pick what they want. So it's one of the reasons why we're doing it this way. Click Save. Now if we go to our testing dashboard, we should have a drop-down list of all of our metrics. Great. Um, I might pick for right now. This is what I actually want to show here. So the reason why we created all these scores is because I want to show the overall score. For me, that's this is kind of the every anything that you build should have a have a purpose. And for me, this is kind of a quick snapshot of okay, how is this person athletically? And then in what categories do they excel? In what categories do they struggle? Okay, great. Now let's let's dig deeper somewhere else. Or let's use that information to inform our, our next set of programming until we test some things again, and then we'll see um, what, what updates there are here. But in any case, this all right. So we have a metric selected, um, and in our chart data now, this is where we're going to build some things. So we've been here before. We have this testing dashboard. It may look a little bit different because I tend to clean things up every once in a while. And now also on this testing dashboard. We are going, I'm going to continue this streak across here, and we are going to have an area for gauges. So I'm just going to highlight these cells here, and I, I don't know how much space this is going to take up, but I'll merge them, and I'll just call this um, score, score gauges, bold it, put on the gray. I'll, 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 do, I'll do all this stuff, most of the formatting stuff later, so I know where things are. The first thing that we need to know is the metric that we picked. So let's type in metric here. We don't need to know this, but it makes it easier um, for calculations on this page. So the metric, we'll do an equal sign, go to our testing dashboard, and click on the metric that we selected in our dropdown, and click enter. So now it's brought into here, and we know the metric that we picked, and we can perform our calculations based on that metric selected. And I apologize to all of you that know what you want to display. And unfortunately, I mean, we're going to go through how to make this dynamic. So we select a metric and we're going to do it based off that selection, um, which has some compromises and, and some benefits. But most, you should know what you want to display there, um, or I would hope that you do, and you don't need it to be uh, super dynamic. In any case, let's start setting up this gauge. And to set up any gauge, you need three pieces of information. You need the maximum value of the gauge. You need the value that you're interested in, or that determines how far the gauge fills up. And you need the difference between those two. So for the maximum, I'll just call this max value. And I'll call this, or I'll call it max. Let's say max value, player value, and we'll say remaining. 
Let's start with the player value calculation, because we've done this a bunch of times already. And we're going to use average ifs, and now that we have named ranges from the last video, we're going to use named ranges instead. So now you'll be exposed to using named ranges in calculations also. So equals average ifs, open parenthesis, because we want to get the average value that the player has for the event in question. And there's only one value, so the average of that one, the average of that one value is the value itself. And to determine which metric we get the value of, we're going to use that index that we did before. So we'll go index, open parenthesis. And now what we can type in is let's type in our testing data set, which is testing data. Perfect. So we want to get something from the testing data, comma, comma. And we want to match, open parenthesis, we want to match the metric that we selected in our dashboard comma to our testing data headers so we'll go testing headers another named range so we're looking for something in uh test in our testing data set and that something or that column is going to be based on whatever we select and that has to match up with our testing headers comma zero an exact match comma so that's the average range that's what we want to get the average of the the column of whatever matches the metric that we select, comma, but we also, we don't want the average of all people for all events. We want the average for this person for the event in question. So now, when we start adding in our average ifs criteria, we can go to our testing data and say, we want the player's name, comma, to be equal to criterion one. For now, I'm just gonna type in the number, oops, I'm just gonna type in the number one, comma and also we want the event ID to be equal to the event ID that we select in our dashboard. So do comma one again, close the parenthesis and click enter. And again this is if you watched some of the prior videos, this is a strategy that I that I use sometimes to avoid going back and forth in between sheets. We don't actually want the player's name or the athlete's name to be equal to one. We just put it there for now, and now when we're in this sheet, we can exchange the one for the player's name that we select. And for the event, we don't want the event to be equal to one. We want the event comma to be equal to the event that we selected. And we can click enter. And because this player has a 100, I just want to check really quickly. Let's go to our testing dashboard and change to a different player and go to back to our chart data. And the overall score changed. Perfect. Um, I just want to make sure that it wasn't an, an error. And now to get the max value. For us, all right, this is going to get super complicated. But if you're using scores, we created all of our scores from 0 to 100. So you could simply type in 100 here. Or if you, have a, if you know this is going to be counter movement jump and you have a certain threshold that you want to set as the maximum, maybe it's 30 inches, you could just set 30 here. That's fine. What I'm about to go through is, is a more dynamic way where we're going to get the best value based on the metric that we select, which includes our admin area where we defined certain metrics as lower is better. So, for example, with the 10 meter with sprinting, the best value is going to be the lowest value that's greater than zero. So we're going to accommodate for that, which will make it dynamic. We go to our chart data now. One thing, like we don't need to do these, we've already done all these calculations. We did them all here. It's just deciding what you want to compare. And we could make it super dynamic and compare to team average best. Work. We could do all that stuff again, but we've already done that. We already did all the hard work to calculate these things. So let's say that we're going to compare this player's value, or the end of the gauge is going to represent the team best for that event well we already did that here this calculation right here and we made it flexible to accommodate for a metric that we pick so we can copy this team best copy this formula paste it in here and the only thing that we have to change is in this match what we're doing is we're matching f7 which is body fat to a bunch of things 
But now what we want to do is instead of matching body fat, we want to match this metric that we picked, which is in V5. So if we change F7 to V5, V$5, and I'm just going to copy this V5 that we made and replace the matches with it. So change F7 to V5, change F7 to V5, change F7 to V5, and change F7 to V5. There are five, one, two, three, four, five total times that we need to replace this. I mean, click enter. And now that looks right. The best value should be 100 in our scoring system. And now if we choose a lower, like where lower is better, let's go to our testing data or our testing dashboard and select, I'm going to say 10 meter sprint, 10 M sprint, and go back to our chart data. And now the best value, maybe I should call this best value, not max value, is 1.3. Okay, so we're almost there. The last part is in a normal circumstance where higher is better, we want to subtract the best value from the player value to get the remaining value. But when lower is better, we want to subtract the player value from the best value to get the remaining value. To do that, we can go equals if, open parenthesis. Let's get a reminder of what this is here. So first we need a logical expression. Okay. So if the best value is less than the player value, what do we want to do? Comma. If that's true, then we want to subtract the best value from the player value. So we want V8 minus V7 to get the remaining. If that's not true, or in other words, if the best value is greater than or equal to the player value, or in other words, if higher is better, comma, we want to subtract the player value from the best value. So V7 minus V8. And that's it. So if we close the parenthesis and click enter, we have 0.57 remaining. If we select these cells here and go to insert chart, we get a pie chart. Let's just quickly style. The next video we'll, we'll, we'll style this chart, but I just want to show you. Um, so let's go, let's make this a donut. That's what I'm going to do. And notice, so now this player is 0.57 away from the best. And it, and it looks like that, right? Like they're pretty close. They're not super far away. Um, and now if we switch it to a higher is better metric, or we can go to our testing dashboard. Let's go to overall score. Go to our chart data. Now this person has a 20 and the best is 100. They're pretty far away. So the blue is only a little bit and the red is a lot. And, and you'll see this, this will make sense, but I'm, I'm at my time. So that's it for, for this video. Um, if you found it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate that. And in the next video, we'll create, we'll finalize this gauge and create the next one because we already have a lot of the hard work done. And yeah, that'll, that should be a relatively quick video. So I'll see you in the next one.